Hey guys, just a quick update on the i7 4700MQ CPU. So the the beast is finally unleashed and we're getting over 3 gigahertz on all cores. And all this is thanks to a viewer called Kevin Glean, I hope I pronounced that correctly, that uh, basically made, left a comment on my last video showing the tuning and undervolting with uh, throttle stop. And he pointed me to the non-turbo ratio. And that was to set, put that setting at one from zero. I did that and incredibly, uh, everything just, just got unleashed and released. And mind you, this is something I've been tackling for the last two months since I got the CPU. And uh, let me just quickly show you what I get now on uh, a CPU Z stress uh, test. Now this is a stress test that I did with the Camtasia screen recorder which is a very heavy application running so I get typically 50 to 70 more points on on that uh, stressed stress test. So let's quickly go. Okay so what we're looking at now is a score that I got um, from the computer on without any on the vote. So basically the computer just started with throttle stop not activated. And you can see a score of 1,326 for multi-thread and uh, 260 for single thread. You can see the temperature went up to 91 but quickly went down again because the computer was immediately throttled to 2.4 gigahertz as soon as we crossed the 85 degrees C line. So let me switch on um, throttle stop now and let's take a look at what happens. And here it is. So first thing I do is uncheck the disabled turbo because we're going to be using maximum speeds. And under the fiver, you can see the non-turbo ratio is, has been changed to 1 from 0. Let's go up to... ...3 GHz and apply, and let's see what happens with our benching on CPU-Z. So let's reset the maximum temperatures and let's go. Okay, you can see we are at the 1500 score and we are well over 85 degrees C and we are still going. So you can see that we are no more stopped and uh, we have now almost 150 points more than a regular score without an undervote. And this is the power of throttle stop when used correctly. So let's see what we can do. Let's go a little bit higher since we still have some headroom. At 89 degrees C, we still have around 11 degrees to 100. So you can hear the fans boosting. We're almost taking off to, with those jet engines. We're now at 1,540 for multi-thread and just over 300 points single thread. 96 degrees C max and four more degrees C and the computer is going to basically shut off. <laughs> this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted the power to control where, how the computer performs, the kind of uh, performance that it gives to me and I will then responsibly um, set the, the, the speeds of each course to stay under that uh, 95 degrees temperature. Obviously now with the power I'm going to uh, go ahead with the modification of the heatsink and let's see if we can pump more heat away from the CPU to the fan and increase our, our core speeds. So that was it. Thanks again to Kevin for him showing me uh, that setting that was needed and I have a screenshot for you guys. I quickly ran Cinebench 
R15 and you can see I have a score of 550. From some of my other runs you could see I was basically always at a 460, around that under 500 points in the Cinebench. Sometimes I went up to 525 but that was with the back cover off and with a, a fan being held directly onto the heatsink. And that was only the time when I, I got over 500. But with the computer, basically in its normal configuration, I was always on the 480, 490. We will surely get more than 550 if I removed the back cover and I had a small hand fan blowing on the heatsink. So that's it, guys. I'm very glad to have such a powerful machine now. And um, we're playing with the big boys now. 7700 HQ, I'm coming for you.